In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, welcome to a wonderful celebration here this morning. I'm so happy and so grateful to so many priests who have come to celebrate with us, Bishop Coleman, deacons, religious, the faithful, and uh, our ordinand, who are, I hope, very happy for this day. <laughs> and to their parents, their families, relatives, and friends, welcome one and all. Quiero dar una calorosa bienvenida a los familiares de nuestro diácono Juan Carlos y decirles de nuestra alegría en tenerlos aquí con nosotros para este día tan especial, no solamente para el diácono Juan Carlos, sino también para ustedes familiares y también para nosotros y para toda la diócesis de Fall River, que hoy está enriquecida con la ordenación de tres nuevos sacerdotes. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, 
let us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to these deacons of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by their ministry and life they may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord of God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Vamos, Señor.
When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. Then an argument broke out amongst them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is great, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let those to be ordained priests come forward. Matthew Gerard Hill. Present. Juan Carlos Munoz Montoya. Present. Daniel Mark News. Present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church pastors are doing these our works. The responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people, and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify they have been found worthy. Rely on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ. We choose these our brothers for the order of priesthood. Thanks be to God. God.
my dear Matthew, Juan Carlos, Daniel, the church of Fall River rejoices with you today. We welcome you into the priesthood. We celebrate with you and with your family as we give thanks to God for having called you and brought you to this day. I hope you realize that you are here today because the Lord in his goodness has called you and you have said yes. We heard in the first reading the prophet Jeremiah that we read today when the Lord told him before I formed you in the womb I knew you. Before you were born I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations I appointed you. Your ordination here today is a response to God who chose you and called you for the service of his people. Following the example of Christ, you listened, you said yes to God the Father, and accepted the Lord's will even if sacrifice was required. As St. Paul told us, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. As priests, you must first be obedient to God in all that you do. When you promise obedience to your bishop here today, you are really promising to obey God's plan and his will for you, which are manifested through the bishop as God's representative for the good of God's people in the local church. An essential aspect to both hearing God and then doing his will is that beautiful virtue of humility. For often God is speaking to us things that we may not want to hear or he may be telling us things that we would rather not do. God did not call you because you were perfect or even because you could become perfect, but because he saw enough goodness, generosity in your heart to make you his servants to shepherd his people. And therefore, he called you to preach the gospel with joy, to celebrate the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, with faith, to counsel and care for God's people with love, to be his apostles, to bring God's word to the world. He called you to be Christ for the world. In proclaiming the gospel of the Lord, which is your primary task as a priest, remember that you preach it more with your life than with your words. Remember that you are being ordained not for yourself, not for honor, privilege, but to be servants of God and his people. As priest, you are configured in Christ and are called to conform your life to the life of Christ. You have been chosen 
from among God's people. Now you are one for God's people. Priesthood, first and foremost, is not something that we do, but who we are. In the beautiful apostolic exhortation, Pastoris Double Vobis of St. John Paul II, he tells us that the priest must be a man of God, the one who belongs exclusively to God and inspires people to think of God. So the priest must have a deep intimacy with the Lord Jesus. And in order to be a man of God, you must be a man of prayer, of sacrifice, of meditation on God's Word, of contemplation before God's wonderful deeds and His presence in the mystery of the Eucharist. Always keeping your eyes on Jesus. We do all for Him and we do all in memory of Him. In his recent apostolic exhortation, Gaudete et Exultate, Pope Francis tells us, are there moments when you place yourself quietly in the Lord's presence, when you calmly spend time with Him, when you bask in His gaze? Do you let this fire inflame your heart unless you let him warm you more and more with his love and tenderness you will not catch fire and how will you then be able to set the hearts of others on fire by your words and your witness we never have to pretend that we have all the answers, that we are perfect. We don't have it all under control. We know that. We are fellow sinners with God's people. We are journeying with them in faith. We need their prayers as they need ours. We need their faith as they need ours. We need their sacrifice, their enthusiasm, their joy, their hope, just as they need ours. We heard in the Gospel today Jesus telling us or Luke narrating that scene of the Last Supper when Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it. Perhaps this is a paradigm of the priesthood itself. Jesus takes us, He blesses us, breaks us, and gives us. Taking and blessing, we probably feel very good about it. Breaking and giving, I'm not so sure. Well, are you willing to allow Jesus to take you, to bless you, to break you, and give you to his people so that you no longer belong to yourself but to the church and to God's people. We are not priests for what we can get but for what we can give. And anyone who is in it for power, authority, 
privilege or entitlement shouldn't even be in it. Maybe we need to go back to the church of the Acts of the Apostles. And remember Peter and John walking to the temple and the beggar asking him and he says silver and gold I do not have but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ stand up and walk because God truly is the only treasure people look for in the priest. Gold, clout, prestige, power, poverty, wealth, well, we don't have them anyway. All we have is Jesus with us, our faith, and the sacraments, and God's word. And that we can give to them. And that is the greatest treasure they ever want. That's what people are looking for. And we, can, we cannot give him unless we are filled with his presence in our lives. We don't have to do extraordinary things to share Jesus with people. We can do it in the very ordinary circumstances of life. When done in faith and love. Scholarly research has found that what people most want from their priest are hope, holiness, and a smile. Isn't that pretty simple? The late Cardinal Joseph Bernardin once said, the priest is the one who leads the people of God into an ever more intimate contact with Jesus Christ. It is in carrying out his sacred task that one is mostly authentically a priest. They don't want us to be politicians, business managers, or social workers. They want us to bring them into contact with the transcendent and with holiness. <clears throat> the late Cardinal Francis Xavier Nguyen Van Thuyen gave us 10 simple rules for a happy, fulfilled, fruitful life. He said, I will live the present moment to the fullness. I will discern between God and God's works. I will hold firmly to one secret prayer. I will see in the Holy Eucharist my only power. I will have only one wisdom, the science of the cross. I will remain faithful to my mission and to the church as a witness of Jesus Christ. I will seek the peace the world cannot give. I will carry out a revolution by renewal of the Holy Spirit. I will speak one language and wear one uniform charity. And I will have one very special love, the Blessed Virgin Mary. On this day, we celebrate the memorial 
of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. May she protect you, guide you, defend you, and keep you close to her Immaculate Heart and close to the Sacred Heart of her Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Dear sons, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. <clears throat> Do you resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge with, without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worldly and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently, in accord with the church tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. I do. do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care? by observing the command to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all? I, I do, with the help of God. <clears throat> Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successor? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. <clears throat> my dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of priests.
us, we beseech you, O Lord our God, and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Draw near, O Lord, the Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ your Son by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses on the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help, he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is Apostle and High Priest of our Confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim. And he made his apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness to grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, on these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for all the world. And so may the full number of nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer a sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer a sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Recibe las ofrendas del pueblo santo para presentarlas ante Dios. Considera lo que realizas y imita lo que conmemoras y conforma tu vida en el, con el misterio de la cruz del Señor. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Congratulations, God bless you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the soul of the church. O God, who have willed that your priests should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray that the labors of your servants may constantly please you and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to, to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, 
But with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in this sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with your word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Amen. 
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our daily life. Te pedimos, Padre, que esta víctima de reconciliación traiga la paz y la salvación al mundo entero. Confirma en la fe y en la caridad a tu iglesia, peregrina en la tierra, a tu servidor el Papa Francisco, a nuestro obispo Edgar, a la orden episcopal, a nosotros hijos tuyos, que hemos sido ordenados hoy presbíteros de la iglesia, a los demás presbíteros y diáconos, y a todo el pueblo reunido por ti. Atiende los deseos de esta familia que has congregado en tu presencia. Reúne en torno a ti, Padre misericordioso, a todos tus hijos dispersos por el mundo. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing in this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please, be Peace, Bishop. Thank, Thank you. you. Peace, John Carlos. Peace, 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 be with you. Peace be with you. Congratulations again. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. The 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 body of Christ. 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 God bless you. sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united in you 
in your unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Session of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bishop, may the Lord give you the, the wisdom necessary to keep shepherding this flock in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Through the intercession of St. Peter and Paul and all the apostles, May the Lord give you the assistance to guide this diocese and bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to the conclusion of our celebration here now this afternoon, I want to express my profound gratitude to so many people involved not only in the celebration here today, but in helping our newly ordained to come to this day. I want to thank their parents, their families for their support. I want to thank all the teachers from kindergarten to the seminary. <laughs> because I'm sure they have, they have all left uh, an impact in your life. I want to thank all the, the priests for continuing to promote, to support, and to encourage vocations. I want to thank the presence of all the priests, of Bishop Coleman, all the deacons, the religious, our seminarians. And uh, it's really hopeful to feel that we have every year with uh, God's grace, one ordination or more in the years to come, and that's uh, a real hope for us. I want to thank everyone involved in the liturgy, the MCs, the servers, uh, Deacon Allen, who made sure that everything went smoothly. Thank you. The choir for the beautiful music. And to all of you for your presence, your prayers, and your faith that keeps encouraging the transformation of our diocese for the future and the, know that I truly appreciate and know that you are all in my prayers and I hope you keep praying for me and for the work of our diocese and for an increase in vocations to ministry in our church, especially to the priesthood. God bless all of you and obviously we want to express our thanks and our gratitude and our congratulations to the newly ordained. Matt, one cows and one. Congratulations. <laughs> now the work will begin soon, right? <laughs> the Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with His grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. 
Amen. May he make you a servant and witness in the world to divine charity and truth and faithfully minister of reconciliation. Amen. And may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and the word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon all of you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks be to God.